Now, I think that Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy is one of the finest achievements in movies, the way he crafted all three at the same time. They were massive successes. They were so true to the book, and when they weren't, there were largely justifiable reasons for those decisions. I, I also tend to think that his Hobbit trilogy is one of the go-to examples when people talk about excess and bloat in Hollywood and how it's completely unnecessary and does not make a superior product. Lord of the Rings as a book is over 1,200 pages. The Hobbit is about 350. So the only reason that you would try and pad that out to a full trilogy is... Yeah. Now, the movie that we're going to be talking about today is a perfect exercise in minimalism, the perfect counterpoint to Peter Jackson's bloated trilogy. Most people think that the first adaptation of The Hobbit is the Rankin-Bass 1977 animated classic. Fewer people know that there's an even earlier version of The Hobbit. It's only 12 minutes long, it's barely animated, using mostly still paintings like a children's book, with a few extra tricks to sell the illusion while a narrator guides us through the events of The Hobbit. And it doesn't get it all right. Like, the dragon is Slag instead of Smaug. Slag, the agent of evil on Earth and it's Gloom instead of Gollum, which, I don't know, I kind of like. We must squeeze it till it dies, yes? We don't let it take our dearest ring, Gloom. And they have to drop a whole bunch of stuff in the story to fit it down to 12 minutes. But uh, if you look this up on your own, you're going to see a tremendous amount of hate in the comments and mockery and... Honestly, can't we all just like unclench a little bit? This is a cute and inventive and honestly pretty charming children's storybook version of The Hobbit. So whose life is it really wrecking? It's available on YouTube if you want to check out the whole thing on your own. The question that remains is, why was this movie made? And by who? And for that story, we're going to be taking a page out of Tales from Development Hell, The Greatest Movies Never Made by David Hughes, on page 52. In Europe, work was underway on an animated adaptation of Tolkien's earlier work, The Hobbit, thanks to the foresight of producer Bill Snyder, who in 1964 optioned the right for a period extending to the 30th of June in 1966, handing the task of adaptation to legendary animator Gene Deitch. After reading the book, I caught the fever Deitch recalled in his autobiography, How to Succeed in Animation, Don't Let a Little Thing Like Failure Stop You, and intensively began working up a screenplay. The great sweep of adventure, the fabled landscapes, and the treasure of fantasy characters made the story a natural for animation. Incredibly, Deitch and his writing partner, Bill Bernal, were well into the screenplay when they heard for the first time of the existence of The Lord of the Rings. Having assumed there was only The Hobbit to contend with, and following Snyder's wish, we had taken some liberties with the story that a few years later would be grounds for burning at the stake, Deitch admitted. These changes included changing some of the characters' names, playing fast and loose with the plot, even creating a love interest, a princess no less, for Bilbo Baggins. Having read The Lord of the Rings, Deitch and Bernal realized that they were dealing with something far more magnificent than The Hobbit, and set about retrofitting elements from their later works into their script to allow for a potential sequel. They even conceived a groundbreaking animation method they christened Imagimation, which would combine cell-animated figures over elaborate 3D model backgrounds in the style of some techniques pioneered by animation genius Max Fleischer. In January 1966, Deitch was invited to America to make a presentation to 20th Century Fox. By the time we arrived, however, Snyder had already blown the deal by asking Fox for too much money. Evidently, word of the Lord of the Rings groundswell of success had not reached the ears of Fox executives. By the time they did, Snyder found himself with an ace in the hole. According to the paperwork to the film rights to The Hobbit, all Snyder had to do in order to hold an option also covering The Lord of the Rings was produce a full-color motion picture version of The Hobbit by 30th of June, 1966. Nowhere in the contract did it state that the film must be animated or feature length, or even produced to a high standard. As a mortified Deitch explained, all he had to do was order me to destroy my own screenplay, all my previous year's work, poke up a super condensed scenario on the order of a movie preview, but still tell the entire basic story from beginning to end, and all within 12 minutes running time, one 35mm reel of film. Cheap. I had to get the artwork done, record voice and music, shoot it, edit it, and get it into a New York projection room on or before the 30th of June, 1966. 
marshalling a tiny group of friends and associates, a Czech illustrator named Adolf Born, a composer friend named Vaclav Lidel, and an American narrator, Herb Last, each worked out a simple storyboard brought to life with paper cutouts photographed with multiple exposure, visual effects, and scene continuity, working directly under the camera. Incredibly, the one real film was completed on time and Deitch arrived in New York with the rough answer print a day ahead of schedule. Snyder had already booked a small projection room in Midtown Manhattan and after a quick test screening, Deitch ran downstairs to stop passers-by asking if they would mind paying 10 cents admission to see a new animated film. After the screening, the few puzzled audience members were asked to sign a paper stating that on this day of the 30th of June, 1966, they had paid admission to see the full-color animated film The Hobbit. Thus, Snyder's film rights to the entire J.R.R. Tolkien library were legally extended, and he was immediately able to sell them back for nearly $100,000. It's incredible. All right, well, that was it for this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, give me suggestions of what you want to see in the future, uh, and I'll see you next week.